Okay, hello. This is uh, my second uh, Facebook live video streaming here, and I am excited to be back and uh, doing this with whoever is present or going to be present here shortly. Um, my name is Suzanne Anderson, and I'm a psychologist, a executive coach, a speaker, and the co-author of The Way of the Mysterial Woman, Upgrading How You Live, Love, and Lead. And actually, it's rather um, kind of exciting news to report uh, about our book because yesterday we just heard that we won another award, which is the, the finalist in the women's category of the Indie Book Awards, which was very cool. And then um, last week, we heard that we had won the gold in women's category in the Novelist Book Awards. Um, so very exciting. And prior to about two months ago, we'd gotten a, another award, with, a finalist award with the best, uh, best book awards. So what's exciting, I think, for me is that uh, this this uh, book represents really 20 years um, of my research and work in trying to find a pathway for women that could start to awaken these uh, second level, the next level of our our potential capacity. So I think the um, hopefully that the awards will help the book get into more women's hands, which would be very cool. So. Um, the topic today, the topic today is uh, build your reservoir, caring for others without losing self-care. You know, and I was thinking about this this topic, and it can sound kind of like, well, been there, done that. Isn't this, isn't this just a topic about balance and how we're balanced and how we have to be better at taking care of ourselves in some way? Um, and while there are elements of what I want to talk about today um, and hopefully get your input on, it's, um, it's not where I want to start because um, I think it's a deeper issue that we have to look at here about why this happens, that we tend to, to be absent to ourselves and more extended to other. And um, I'm just I'm learning here how to read comments as they scroll down the right hand side and it's great I love to have people tuning in here with me thank you for saying hello which is great and and any comments and questions that you have as we go along um, type them in and at a certain point actually pretty soon here I'm gonna have a student exercise together and then I'm gonna definitely want to hear from you um, so all right so back to this the larger context again for this conversation it, it has to do with um, something that, that I lay out in the book that ha it is around the, the cultural paradigm we've been in now for over 5,000 years, which is what we could call now a hyper-masculine paradigm. Now, we know this from research, that there, there was uh, 50,000 years, roughly, of a more feminine paradigm prior to this, uh, centered around the mother archetype, we could say. But then in our recorded history, we, we know we've had 5,000 years of a very different kind of paradigm. 5,000 years is a long time to have this very dominant um, masculine, which has sort of patriarchal elements to it, more of the father, you could say, and also more of the her heroic um, archetype embedded in it. And, and so women and our, our sense of value and our sense of valuing ourselves has been a part of that paradigm. And of course, then we have in our very DNA, because this all gets passed down generation after generation, a sense of one of the deep underlying limiting beliefs that we found in our, in our research um, that, that most that women share really in our individual unconscious, but also in the collective pattern, which is, I am not enough. I am not enough. Now just take a moment <clears throat> wherever you are and see if you can f recognize that for yourself, that sense of I am not enough. Now if you're finding resonance with that, and this is the uh, belief in the first gate of 
the developmental pathway that we spent years decoding for women. On the other end of that polarity, that being the, the first gate at the mother, is another belief that's in the second gate of the, of the hero archetype, and that is I have to do to be of value. So take a moment just to feel that one. I have to do to be of value. You can see how these would play together, right? So I am not enough. I just fundamentally don't feel that my being is enough. And so I'm going to have to do a lot of things and for a lot of you out there in order to be of value. So we have this kind of unholy alliance going on, I think, encoded in the DNA that tells us that taking time for ourselves is selfish and we feel guilty when we do and uh, or ashamed after we do do this how could we do this with our children needing so much with our friends needing so much with our parents needing so much of our attention with the world in the state that it's in right now how could we possibly take the time to to nourish ourselves and this is the, the conversation here. I actually, I, I, I believe the conversation is, is, again, I'll just say for those of you that are just tuning in now, it, it isn't just as at the level of, well, let's take do a little bit more for self-care, which of course we do have to do. It's at the level of, if we are going to shift the cultural paradigm here, where, where we see and value ourselves as women, um, we actually have to, and that, and that those feminine values then start to influence culture. We have to come home to ourselves. We have to come home to ourselves and to our own, our own suffering. And we override this in just amazing ways. Um, the really scary statistics now about the way we, we override and what it takes to be alive as a human, as a woman right now in the world, all that we need to do and take care of. Um, one in four women here in the U.S. Uh, are on some form of anti-depressive, anti-anxiety men. Um, we have a workaholism that's just um, scaling up and up, and the numbing up in front of TV, and the numbing up with food, the numbing up with alcohol and other drugs, to to basically dial down the sense. Um, the stress and the overwhelm, the s nervous system stress, the, the, the body overwhelm, overeating to, to, um, to numb out. But if this vessel isn't healthy, and if we are not well and rested in ourselves, then we have a very hard time even knowing what we should take care of, what is ours to do. So when the, um, the, this healthy mother archetype kind of arises for us, and this is the first, the first gate in this five-step um, women's developmental pathway that I've um, decoded and that I work with women to, to open up, when this first gate here of the mother is actually um, opened, then the liberating belief uh, is experienced not as an idea but actually in the body and that is I am enough just as I am I am enough just as I am so just let that in from or C as you as you feel into that or maybe say it out loud and see if that resonates with you could it be all right that you could be enough because you you are who you are, that you don't have to prove your value. And proving your value through overdoing and overextending. Well, when that liberating belief of I am enough is in place, then at the other end, in the, at the second gate, which I mentioned before of the hero, then the liberating belief arises here, which is, I am empowered to do what is mine to do. I am empowered to do what is mine to do. And that's really different than the limiting belief 
that drives us and the unconscious of I have to do to be of value. So some of you may know um, Mary Oliver's poetry, which I love. She's a great American poet. And one of her poems that I think speaks to this so beautifully is called Wild Geese. And the first paragraph is where I want to start. And then I want to lead us in a little process together. So the um, first line, you do not have to be good. I always feel like I could stop right there. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert. This is, I have to do to be of value, right? You do not have to walk on your knees across the desert for a hundred miles repenting. Now here's the key. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. What's so beautiful about that is she's saying uh, in the most simple language in the way poetry can convey, come back home to yourself. You are in a human body and it's very uniquely just for you. So what does your body love? What nourishes you? What has you relax and soften? This is key because in a sense this is this is the key to replenishing the reservoir because we actually we, we, we actually have to come on back in the body and in this first gate um, open the shift out of the driving sympathetic nervous system, the adrenalized experience, the hypertension, the heart rate uh, way too fast, high blood pressure. How do we get a body that is uh, resilient enough to hold all the things we do have to do and take care of in our own lives and in the world? So let me say, give you a few examples of things. And, and what I want you to do, and in fact, if you're, if you're multitasking, which is often the case on Facebook, if you can just take a moment to not multitask with me and just stay with me, so you can feel this in your body, because I actually need you to feel this for, us to, for you to get a sense of how this works. Um, I'm going to say a few things that are, for me, uh, what the soft animal of my body loves. And then what I want you to do is type in to me, tell me what the soft animal of your body loves, and I will read them out, or I guess I'll read them, but I think we can all see them on this scrolling down the side. Um, so that you can feel and not you know when you write it let yourself really feel it feel what that is for you let your body and your heart come into resonance with the visualization your mind is helpful here of that thing that experience so i'll start us off uh, the soft animal of my body loves uh, napping in the afternoon so you can also just feel this with me I'm napping in the afternoon uh, with a warm blanket and my kitties uh, curled up in my legs with me. <clears throat> the soft animal of my body <coughs> excuse me, loves sitting with a cup of tea, hot tea, that I make myself, loose leaf tea, in the sun. looking out at my garden. The soft animal of my body loves having a really good glass of wine with a dear woman friend, um, sharing our stories together. And the soft animal of my body loves fresh, clean sheets 
and getting into bed in the evening and feeling that uh, welcome clean sheet. So this is all in the body, yeah? So I invite some of you to come on in with your, what does the soft animal of your body love? This is a deep feminine principle to be able to even recognize you have a body that loves certain things. I invite you to type that in. It could be very simple things. Cuddling your child <clears throat> before they go to sleep at night. What does the soft animal of your body love? I'm hoping you'll type this in. I'm hoping those of you that are here will be bold. There's someone. Okay, the soft animal of my body loves a warm summer day by the lake. Okay, let's just all feel this. Because what I want you to do when we've completed this is really be able to sense your body here. The soft animal of my body, Kathy says, um, loves to be in a place of external silence. Tracy, the soft animal of my body, loves cuddling my children. Yes. And Susan says, a soft animal of my body loves feeling the warmth of a hot summer day on my skin. Oh, yeah. Feeling the cool breeze at the beach on my face. Looking up at an open sky, watching hawks dance together. Beautiful. Yes. What else does the soft animal of your unique body loves? Loves to eat warm vegetable soup. Yeah. Michelle says, tending my garden, like your hands in the earth. The soft animal of my body loves riding my road bike really fast behind a partner who is even faster and giving myself to the speed and the sort of adventure excitement of it all. A soft animal of my body also loves uh, skiing fast down a mountain, um, in tune with the mountain. And Ali says the soft animal of her body loves swirling stevia sweetened homemade almond milk over my tongue. I got that. Lovely. Susan soaking in a hot salt bath. Oh yeah, I love this. Sprinkled with lavender oil and lit by candles. And feel as I'm saying this, as you're reading these, as you're writing these, what's happening in your body. I can feel in myself. I'm softening, opening. A gentle breeze on a soft summer night. Soft summer night. That's You're feeling this in your body. Yeah. <clears throat> you do not have to be good. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Cuddling with soft animals. Mm. Soft animal of my body loves gentle kissing um, with a lover then moves into passion. Uh, being carried along by a, a wave of women <laughs> and murmuration at the Women's March. Oh yeah, the, the, at the, when we did our Women's March, the soft animal of Susan's body, loving that feeling of being surrounded by all that oxytocin, all those women marching. Thrusting my bare feet and hands, Chris, into the newly tilled warm, rich, loam and floating in ocean waves. Oh yeah. 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 Floating on skis too. Kathy likes that image I gave before. Yeah. So we could and <laughs> we could and I invite you to carry on with this. This is feel in your body what's happening. This I call yin nectar. This is the generation of yin nectar. The first gate in this sequence 
is yin yin. This is what I spent so long figuring out in my women's leadership programs. What is with us not taking care of ourselves, with us overdoing, with us in positions of leadership but not really extending any new kind of leadership? What was happening to women? It seemed like we were stalled inside this masculine model of wholeness, like our own development was stalled. We saw we sort of reached the top of the hero's journey mountain and stopped. And was there something else? Was there another uh, level of development that is even beyond our capacity to see right now? And now I can say, after 15 years of this research, yes, that's true, there is. And, and it, it is literally, I believe, this new way of being I call mysterial, because I couldn't find a word to really describe what I was starting to see in students that worked with me in our programs. Um, I would say, yes, this mysterial way of being is a match for evolution today, that it's actually being called forth now by these times. So the 5,000 years of this great arc of a masculine worldview were not wrong at all. In fact, they, they moved the evolutionary game board forward, we could say. But right now, the problems that we've created, the complexity of the culture we've created, simply requires us to have more on board. It requires us actually to, to, to bring in uh, feminine capacities that we have not used before, that we need to use now, and have those arise with the healthy masculine. So it isn't just, in my view, about feminine leadership or just the feminine, in men and in women, by the way. It is about the, the balance uh, or the relationship between yin and yang. And that's what this mysterial sequence is that I decoded. And, it re and, it, and each one of the gates um, has us go back through the developmental pathway that we went through as you know, babies, young women, young girls, all the way through up to elderhood. And all of the five different places where a yin or a yang essence kind of turns on in terms of our, our um, genetic unfolding, the way that, the, the, that those genes sort of ignite, uh, to go back and see if we can liberate the healthy feminine yin or masculine yang essence. So the first gate is what we call the, the gate of the mother. And everything starts here. And I, I, I will say this is the yin yin that we're talking about here, that we're experimenting with, that you can feel if you were here when we did that process of of um, opening to the soft animal of the body that you can feel in your very body. This is the yin field. Uh, and we have to begin as women cultivating the yin field. Everything begins here. We have to do that first in our bodies. Then we have the possibility of extending that to others. That's natural. We don't do it then in a way that is devouring the others at the expense of ourselves. And we don't do it like the, 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 that we have, we, we can't give anything because it's just too overwhelming. We are rested into the, the belief of I am enough just as I am. And from that ground of being, then we can move to the masculine or the yang uh, gate, which is the second one, and know what is ours to do. I am empowered to do what is mine to do, which cannot be everything. So the invitation here to all of you listening is to, to take the time to nourish the soft animal of your body and find out what it is for you that is nourishing. In my programs, I actually have women um, require them in a sense of, as part of their field work to do something I call a, a soul date or where they actually have to go and be with themselves every uh, every few weeks for a minimum of two hours in some way that is nourishing and not something they regularly do. A gift they give to themselves uh, because they do not have to be good. <laughs> to quote Mary Oliver, they do not have to walk on their knees for across the desert for a hundred miles repenting for all the things they haven't done all the bad things they did do. No, they can let the soft animal of their body love what they love. And so that might be, you, know, you could consider this a practice to experiment with this. 
it's very helpful when you're in a university program like mine to be able to say, well, I have to go and do this, this uh, <clears throat> field work and take care of myself. But uh, we can give ourselves increasingly permission to do that. To and I often uh, and I ask for this time to be something you do with yourself, so that you aren't shaped by what other people want to do. That you can actually just take yourself to a movie in the middle of the afternoon. You can go and walk on the beach. Um, as some of you had on your list here, you can go and garden and, and be with yourself gardening until you've actually generated what you just felt, I hope, in your body right now, the yin nectar. You can also do this at work in very simple ways. I know some of you are tuned in here right now from work. And maybe even the simple exercise of just for a moment letting yourself remember and let yourself feel in your body what your soft animal loves, you already hopefully dropped out of an adrenalized stress state. But we also know now from the good research that's been done by, by many that our, our systems actually thrive in a pulsing of movement forward and rest, movement forward and rest. And actually, 90 minute cycles of moving into action and then 10 to 20 minutes of rest. And the, 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 there's good science on this that's actually showing that we're more productive, we're more efficient, we're more creative and resourceful and innovative when we actually pulse into action and back again. And every time we pulse back, even if it's just for 10 minutes, we are building our reservoir. We are building our reservoir. Now, one, one of the th other things I do in our, in our programs is I have women um, in a, something I call a morning flow, which are a number of practices that start in the morning that basically shape how you enter your day. And, and in my case, when I am really busy, rather than shorten those practices, which are practices that sort of tune my body, heart, mind, and soul. I extend them because I know that in order to be present, taking care of the things I need to take care of during the day, I need to build my reservoir. And I start every day with doing that rather than just rolling over and um, checking your, your text right away or checking your, your um, emails. Yeah, thank you, Jody, for your comment here. You know, like loving the and wonderful to, to, to know you're there, actually. I've seen you for years. Um, wow, yes, exactly. Oh, what does it take now as you've gone through all the layers of that um, physical loss, the loss in your body? of your breasts, what is it now to take care of this body, to be, and I'm sure and many of us have had circumstances that have brought us to our knees, let's say, and I can certainly speak for myself uh, in that regard. And, and being brought to my knees, also being brought down and into my body, into this one precious instrument that I have here, this, this body. That I, that I live in. And, and as women, if we don't do this, if we don't do this, this won't happen on the planet. We see the disregard for planet Earth right now and get very upset about that and march for that. And we need to take, there are certainly things we need to do, especially as we see our own government here rolling back so many of environmental protection. There are things we are actually going to need to do, but it's a little hypocritical, I believe, and it's not sustainable if we're not taking care of this body. The valuing of the feminine body, not as an objectified, beautiful body that men can look at and assess and that we, we see ourselves through those objectifying eyes of we're beautiful, we're not beautiful, we're, we're not the right size and shape and, and strength and our minds aren't quite right either. They should look, you know, I should be thinking like this or thinking like that. All these ways that we've shaped our sense of sufficiency through, through a masculine model. We have to wake up of this, from this trance now. We absolutely have to wake up from this trance. 
because I, I do believe that the, the shifts that are going to be made on the planet now that could potentially help us preserve this precious jewel are going to come about through a shift in consciousness first. We have to awaken consciousness. Um, you know, the Einstein quote, if we cannot solve the problems of today with the consciousness that created them yesterday. Now that's basically, he's a developmentalist as I am, that's my field, developmental psychology. And he's basically saying, you have to turn on the developmental tap again to grow. But as adults and as women, we have felt like, well, we're all kind of grown up and this is who we are. Well, no, I think there's a whole move yet to happen that hasn't happened and we're therefore not going to see a lot of role models out there. We're not necessarily going to see many maps and that's actually part of why we took the time we took and, and the effort to write uh, the book, The Way of the Mysterious Woman, Upgrading How You Live, Love and Lead because I knew the, the programs that we were running here and where I live now in Seattle, I could never get this, this pathway out to enough women. <clears throat> that first of all, women could recognize the, the dilemma they're in right now, some of the suffering that's going on, and the longing for a new way of being. See that as an evolutionary call. See that actually as like a, the, the invitation to be giving birth to the next level of ourselves. We know when we're, you know, when we're pregnant that, that there's a, a kind of discomfort there <laughs> along the way where we're getting close to the the time of actually giving birth and the body says, yeah, we, we're, we're, we got to do something with this. And I think a lot of women are feeling this. And as I said before, I think instead of actually understanding what it is and approaching it um, from a very different perspective, that means coming back here, women often just try to, to reduce the symptoms, try to feel better. And instead of actually seeing this as a birthing of the next level of our our very um, perhaps emergence as a species. Yeah, I think the movement forward as a species is going to involve the wisdom of the body and the wisdom of the heart in a way that it never has before. And it will come into alignment with all that we've developed in the, in the head, our amazing uh, capacities, brain capacities. But it's one system and we have to harness all of it and it requires us to come into the body. So um, <clears throat> just back to Mary Oliver's poem for a minute. Um, so we, that first paragraph I've read to you, the first stanza. And then I want to go to the last stanza because then she says at the end, whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. See, I love that because basically the, the hookup here is you only have to love what you love. You do not have to be good. S stop, get out of that paradigm that has somehow made you wrong for being a woman who wants to be here in love with herself, loving herself, being home. If you could love what you love and start here, then you find your place in the family of things. This is so beautiful because I think another and one of the other deep beliefs that we found in the third gate of this sequence was um, uh, the limiting belief of I do not belong. Fundamentally, I do not belong. And the liberating belief of at home in myself, I naturally belong, is so different. And it arises first from having this deep sense of, whoa, I'm here, uh, resting into my body. So just for a moment, if you're with me, just drop in again to your body. That is, you're listening to me, you're seeing me, or you're watching this and you're doing some other things at the same time. But just for this moment, let's do one more thing to close here. Um, and, and this is, there's been some great work done by 
an organization called HeartMath, which I highly recommend you tune into because they've actually done some research and good research that is showing the the potency of the heart and actually the the reality that there are more uh, there's more more neurological signals go from the heart to the brain than from the brain to the heart and and, and how important it is for the heart to be coherent this is the heart in the body where we actually we actually are giving out um, these this uh, magnetic information all the time kind of a harmonic and what is the quality of that energy that we're putting into the world it's the quality of our heart and one of the practices they find the most potent and that I use in my programs is so simple and I have women do this at the end of the day and so I invite you to do this with me now and then take this maybe as a practice so it has to do with gratitude and when they hooked people up to monitors and they allowed themselves to be grateful for someone or something, they found this harmonic arising in the brain waves and the heart waves in the body. So, so just for a moment, think about someone or something that you are thankful for, that you know has you in this moment what are you grateful for? Who are you grateful for? And feel it in your body. Gratitude for something very simple. It could be your kitty cat. It could be the sun being out today. It could be a friend who sent you a loving text. I'm grateful right now to, to Marissa for putting up the Heart and Health Institute link. And thank you, Susan, as Lucia, very grateful for um, me as a mysterious, compassionate woman. Now just let yourself um, feel what you're grateful for. If you want to type it in, I invite you to do that. Something that you know, might be a way to just feel it a little bit more in your body. What are you grateful for in this moment? Gratitude is a great opener to this yin nectar I've been talking about that hangs out here in the receptive gate of the mother. Gratitude. And I hope you can feel, even in this moment, as you take a second, a few minutes, to, to be grateful, what that feels like in your own body. Because it's a blessing for you, as well as a blessing for others. I had a practice for quite a while where I used to, I um, haven't done it in the last little while, used to, to send a card to someone, one person every month and say something I was grateful for, actual card in the mail, which was so unusual. And some of the comments here are grateful for women all over waking up and standing up, yes, um, for the beautiful mountain view that Ali sees out the window. For sun in Seattle, which I agree, Michelle, this is a miracle, and I'm also very grateful. Um, Rebecca, out there on the east coast of my Maya uh, stomping grounds in Canada, um, capacity to be connected, whole body mind, over such distance with such wisdom. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, let the gratitude, let yourself feel this, and then also what we now know through this wonderful way we're catching up with science is that that gratitude even if the person isn't with you if you're extending it to a particular person or even if you extend it to a plant or an animal this is an electromagnetic wave that actually moves out so that's a wonderful way to condition the world from this place of a heart full grateful very simple practice and I invite you to consider taking that into your um, into your days with you. So uh, I, I, I sh conclude, I guess, here this little conversation with you all about how to build the reservoir with the invitation to, to recognize, first of all, you have a reservoir and that it will not get filled by anyone else. You, you must be responsible for, for, for cultivating that. And that this yin field must be dense and and um, open and fluid and 
juicy in order for us to sustainably do the things that we are going to need to do. And this, in my view, is the first step in the opening or awakening to another level of consciousness. First, we have to come back here and be with what is here in the body. Now, a wonderful quote by Thich Nhat Khan, where he says, a Buddhist teacher uh, who I admire enormously, who says, go back and take care of yourself. Your body needs you, your feelings need you, your perceptions need you. Your suffering needs you to acknowledge it. So go home and be there for all these things. That has something to do with you do not have to be good and you only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. So I, I um, invite you to, to check out the, my book for sure because it's, it lays this all out. And as I say, that's why I spent a lot of time writing it so it could get into the hands of women all over the world who could begin to wake up and really grow themselves up and then really show up as leaders now capable of shaping a positive future for all beings on this precious jewel of a planet and and also you know recognize I actually have practices in all the chapters so that you can get started right away but um, but I invite you to consider the fact that we are actually going to have to go down and in and do some work that's that's not just about positive affirmations we're actually going to have to um, unravel from millennia old old code that's embodied in here and that that isn't necessarily easy but that it is um, possible and I have seen it and this is what I'm interested in doing is really accelerating that opportunity for women to unravel from this hyper masculine code that's deeply in our bodies and begin to awaken to uh, the next level of our wisdom love and power and to that end I also have a Mysterial Leadership Essentials course which is a 10 week online kind of intro that gets you into the stream and awakens each of the archetypes of the five gates in the sequence and I invite you to um, check that out. You can do that on my website which is mysterialwoman.com. I've also just set up an, uh, a Facebook uh, group for uh, to have this conversation and with women as I launch this Mysterial movement in the world and and um, that's Mysterial Woman um, is the Facebook group and it's a closed group and um, I think Marissa maybe are, will put something up there um, for and I think so let me see anyway I believe you can you can just find that in Facebook Mysterial Woman and uh, we're just starting to have the conversation oh thank you Rebecca great um, starting to have the conversation there um, that the thread of which we've we've begun here in Facebook live together so thank you all there it is Marissa just is putting all these links up here so you can have them um, and uh, I'd love to stay in the conversation and love you to share anything that seems um, significant to you with with me or with your friends and one thing I've, I just finished doing is a, is, a, is a series of videos actually blogs I guess they're called vlogs um, where I did these little clips of each one of the gates and they're on my website now too um, that you can that you can watch and get a sense and I give a little practice with each one of those videos so that you can already if, if it's not the timing for you to do any, any deeper work which of course I, I would I want, want it to be for you because I want us to get going. Um, but if, if it isn't, these videos can be a great place to start. Okay, so um, I think the connections are being put up here for you. Thank you, Michelle, for taking a pause from your work day. And I hope it, I hope it is a, a, was a pause that really did build your reservoir and, um, and, and I, I can't see, of course, everyone who's out there, but great, Jody, to be with you too, and and Rebecca, and anyone else that I may know that has tuned in, and uh, send my love with you all, and all women everywhere around the globe right now who are who are, as Susan Mucci said earlier, who are awakening, 
and who have the courage and the commitment to come home here first to ourselves, to be present here so that we can really begin to take care of the world in a way that it desperately needs right now and that I think we are um, being invited by evolution itself to steward. So on that note, I'll say goodbye and hope to, to stay in touch. <laughs>